What do you think Klaus, Klaus Landsberg's legacy will be? I really don't know. I don't think there are very many people outside of people like you that even knows there's such a person existed. Without him, television would eventually be what it is today, but it would take him a lot, lot longer to be what it is today. He was a very sharp man, engineering-wise, program-wise, and in all facets of life. He was a very smart individual. Uh, as rough as he was with my learning to run a camera and to obey orders, I have more respect for him than anybody I've ever worked for. And I've worked with some big time producers and directors, motion pictures, and nobody has come close to my feelings as it does what I feel for Lansford. A great guy. Uh, what would you say generally uh, were his strengths? Everything that I, every, everything that I've come with with him in business, directing a show, thinking up shows, uh, going to various remotes that turned out to be big, he just had a knack of finding it and of knowing whether it's going to be big enough to to be worth shooting. He was he was uh, an extraordinarily smart guy for me. And I have learned an awful lot from him. You know, when, when you go to motion pictures, you're scared as hell. You got big time people. You know, the, the, the owners of the studios and the big directors and this and that. Now you get guys to become a cameraman to shoot a camera, camera operator in the studios. You got to know how to use not just a panning handle, the wheels. And there's there's no such thing as, gee, I missed this one, can we do it again? Because you don't last long on a job. And when I went from Landsberg and quit KTLA, where there's nothing but a panning handle, into the studios and right off on wheels, there was nothing to it. It was just like cheesecake. It was so simple. And I've seen guys that have come up through the ranks, second assistant, first assistant, and then operator. When they get through the wheels and a shot, they got a mark in, the, in both hands. They're gripping it so hard and so tight and trying to make it good. that It doesn't come easy. And yet I found there was nothing to it. But I did a lot of practicing. I knew I was going to go for a year to motion pictures. I would go to the rental houses and rent the, a tripod, set of wheels, and I got a great big piece of cardboard and a big black pen and just scribbled all over it. And then, and oh, and a viewfinder, an old time viewfinder from an old camera, motion picture camera. And I'd just practice hour after hour, day after day, with the wheels and the chart, and then around furniture, and then around the cars that were going down the street. I practiced for a year. When I went to my first job, it was like sitting here in a chair and talking. It was nothing. You, you just mentioned earlier what Klaus Landsberg taught you. Would you say it's fair to, fair to say that, uh, that his, um, the pressure that he put on people to do the best job possible enabled you to learn and feel comfortable with the camera? Is that a fair statement? That's right. Absolutely. If you made one mistake, he jumped on you just like Louis B. Mayer would jump on you spending millions. But you learned. You never made the same mistake second time.